So what actually is the ketogenic diet? Let's cover that. I'm going to start simple and then go a little bit more complex, but keep it simple overall. It is simply a method of eating certain foods and certain combinations that cause the body to run on ketones. When you burn fat, your body makes ketones. And ketones can be used as an alternative fuel source. In fact, your body loves running on ketones. It's actually a much healthier fuel source. Uh, there's less waste. It's more efficient. There's more energy in ketones. And your body has a lot more stored fat than it does stored sugar. An average person who's not overweight has roughly between 90 and 100,000 calories of stored fat versus that same person only has about 1,700 calories of stored sugar. So what makes more sense? Running your body on 100,000 calories of stored energy or this small reserve right here? If you rely only on sugar fuel or stored sugar, it's called glycogen, when you start burning fat and you get into fat burning, you can go a lot longer without being hungry and especially without craving carbs. So the real big advantage of the ketogenic diet versus other diets is that your hunger goes away and your cravings go away, making it very, very easy to do this long term. So if we compare the ketogenic diet to a low calorie diet or a low fat diet, both of these diets are a high carbohydrate diet. It's the carbohydrates that actually prevent fat burning. So when someone does a low calorie diet or a low fat diet, yet it's a high carbohydrate diet, they are going to struggle. They're going to be dependent on doing more exercise. They'll lose some temporary water weight, but they're going to pretty much give up. And this is basically why 98% of diets fail, simply because they're not sustainable. Why? Because you're hungry all the time and you're craving carbs all the time, making it actually impossible to stick to because of all the temptations you have around you uh, constantly. So what makes a person go into ketosis or basically making ketones is lowering your carbohydrates. You need to lower your carbohydrates between 20 and 50 grams. The lower the carbohydrate, the more you get into ketosis. So really, you can look at the ketogenic diet as a fat-burning diet. Now, if you're going to lose weight, wouldn't you want to burn fat? So basically, to make it really simple, you lower your carbohydrates. You don't do a high-protein diet. It's a moderate-protein diet. So here's a little point that people have a confusion on. They have this idea that the higher fat is really bad for them. But if you keep your carbs low, there is no danger in consuming more fats. So when you go into ketosis, you're simply shifting your fuel source from the sugar to the fat. And this takes three days. And the way to get into this is to lower your carbs because then it forces your body to look at other sources of energy. This stuff right here, stored fat. All right, let's go to the next section. All right, so let's discuss the ketogenic diet versus other diets. So you're going to lose water weight for about, I don't know, one to two weeks. So it's going to give you a little sense of hope that, wow, it's working. I'm losing uh, some weight, but it's water weight. Why would someone only lose water weight and plateau within two weeks? Simply because you've never got into fat burning, okay? There's a big difference with weight loss between losing water and losing actual fat. And realize that exercise only contributes to only 15% of your results. So if you, in your mind, if you're thinking that I'm going to exercise this weight off, it's going to be very, very insignificant compared to using a correct diet. With these other diets, you're going to be craving all the time. You're going to be hungry all the time, making it impossible to stick to for any period of time. So you end up failing, like 98% of people fail, and it's always blamed on the person's willpower. But think about it. How are you going to stick to anything if you're craving and you're hungry all the time, it's actually gonna be impossible. And as soon as you consume too many carbs on these diets, your blood sugar is going to come down because you're gonna spike insulin. Insulin suppresses the blood sugars, and then you're gonna end up with low blood sugars. So that's when you're cranky, irritated on this diet, hungry all the time, that's what's really happening. On the other hand, if you're gonna do a healthy version of a keto plan, we call it healthy ketosis, you're gonna actually burn actual fat. You'll lose some water weight, but you're going to start burning fat. 
And the less carbohydrates you consume, the more you're going to get into this fat burning. Your hunger is going to go away. You're not going to crave anymore. These two things alone will allow you to stick to it uh, long term. If you don't have hunger and you don't have cravings and you don't have low blood sugar issues, it's not going to be painful. In fact, you're going to find that your energy is going to increase. Now, there is an actual adaptation phase, two to three days. It takes your cells to adapt to fat burning. So if you take enough electrolytes and B vitamins, you won't have any uh, transitional symptoms. But you'll get into it. Your, your energy will spike. Your cognitive function, your focus, uh, your memory will do better. Why? Because your brain loves ketones. You're going to find inflammation going down. If you have stiffness or pain in your body, that's going to come down. Your skin's going to look better, less acne. So I just want to make one little distinction. You have ketosis and then you have healthy ketosis. Um, let me tell you the difference. Healthy ketosis is basically doing this low carb plan with very healthy ingredients and nutrient dense foods. Because one thing about the ketogenic diet, they don't really tell you exactly the quality of food that you should eat. So I'm just recommending, make sure you do it healthy for several reasons. Number one, as you lose weight, you're going to look better, okay? You're going to feel better and you're going to be healthier. But the fact that you're doing keto alone by lowering the carbohydrates has huge benefits, okay? So in the next part, let me show you why. So the whole purpose of getting into ketosis and running an alternative fuel source is to drop and normalize your insulin levels. Nearly 80% of the population has a problem with insulin. They have a condition called insulin resistance, where your receptors will not absorb insulin like they normally should. That gives you dysfunctional insulin. And the body then has to make more and more insulin to compensate. And with that comes a lot of health problems. So you have increased carbs lead to higher amounts of insulin, which then cause insulin resistance because the body is being bombarded by so much volume of insulin, it starts to shut down. An average person who has insulin resistance, which by the way, this is prediabetes, makes between five to seven times more insulin than normal. So that massive amounts of insulin leads to diabetes, metabolic syndrome, which is a combination of belly fat, blood sugar problems, cholesterol problems, People with Alzheimer's have high amounts of insulin. They have insulin resistance. And then we have problems of the heart simply because the inside layer of the arteries are very susceptible to oxidation. And having high amounts of insulin basically rust out your arteries. The body comes in, forms placking, clotting, uh, calcium deposits to the point where you can get heart attacks and even a stroke. Uh, and then hardening of the arteries uh, that comes from high amounts of insulin. Insulin resistance is connected to mood disorders, anxiety, depression. You eventually get a fatty liver and also cancer because cancer cells basically live on sugar. So now let me show you specifically what to eat. So let me give you a rough idea of what you would actually eat on a healthy ketogenic planet. Okay. Now, as far as calories go, if we take a look at this pie chart. Uh, carbohydrates are basically 5% of the total calories. I'm adding vegetables separately that aren't included in the carbs. In fact, I don't want you to count the vegetable carbohydrate for two reasons. Number one, there's not a lot of calories in veggies, number one. Number two, we want to encourage more vegetables. And so anytime we're talking about cutting carbs, uh, we don't want you to cut your vegetables. Okay, and vegetables have a very low uh, glycemic reaction. They don't spike your blood sugars. And they do not increase insulin very much. And also realize that the fiber in the vegetable, and vegetables are very fiber rich, even though they're carbohydrates, they don't trigger the insulin response. So our veggies will be around 5% of the total calories, which is about seven plus cups per day, seven to 10 cups per day. And then protein should be 20% of the total calories. That's basically three to six ounces per meal. Now, if you have a bigger person, have more. Okay, so uh, this is just an, uh, a range. This is a moderate amount of protein. And when I talk about three to six ounces of protein, I'm not talking about the protein in the product, like the meat or fish. I'm talking about the actual 
meat or fish by itself, if you were to weigh the whole thing, because let's say, for example, in fish, you have uh, collagen, you have other things other than the protein. So three ounces of fish versus three ounces of protein in fish is a different value. I'm talking about the actual whole food itself when I talk about three to six ounces. And then we want about 70% uh, of fat. Now, this seems like a lot of fat, doesn't it? Well, let's take a look at an actual plate. Let's say this is your plate. You divide it in, down the center, and you half of the plate, you add vegetables, okay, or a salad. Then one-fourth of the plate will be your protein, and one-fourth would be your fat. So as you can see, this 70% of fat seems like a lot, is not as much as you think, simply because fat has more calories per volume. So this is about calories, okay? This is about volume of food. And then of course, over here, we have our small amount of carbs, okay? All right, so just let me give you some rough ideas on what we're talking about when we talk about carbs. We're not talking about breads or pasta or cereal or crackers or juice. We're talking about the carbs in nuts and seeds. Now, nuts and seeds have protein, okay? They have fat, but they have some carbs. So those are the carbs you're counting. Hummus, it has low sugar, but it has some carbs. But hummus also is made with olive oil and garlic. So there's fat in the olive oil. And then berries are very low on the glycemic index, but you would count the carbs in berries. And then protein right here, we have meats, we have fish, we have seafood, we have eggs, we have cheese, but of course, meat and fish, eggs and cheese also have fat. So when you're dealing with most foods, you're having a combination of things. So this basically, half of this is, could be a combination of some food with fat and protein. You're not gonna eat them separately. Here's some examples of uh, pure fat, butter, coconut oil, avocado. But see, avocado has fat and some carbs. Then you have olive oil, which is a pure fat, and then as far as the veggies go, you have leafy greens and you have cruciferous and there's other vegetables. So I recommend most of the vegetables you consume, leafy greens as salads, consume them raw. But if you're going to add cruciferous, I would recommend steam them or cook them uh, unless you're doing like a kale shake with some berries. That's totally fine. So ideally, you want to go seven to ten cups with your vegetables per day. Uh, now, that might seem like a lot, but that provides a lot of nutrients, a lot of antioxidants. Uh, a lot of vitamins and minerals. And of course, the cruciferous not only has higher amounts of vitamins and minerals, it has high amounts of uh, phytonutrients, which give you additional health benefits. All right, one more section on what not to eat. All right, so let's just talk about what not to eat. So we want to avoid grains, okay, in the form of whole grains and refined grains. Breads, pasta, cereal, crackers, biscuits, waffles, pancakes, even though something is gluten-free, it still has grains. So just avoid all grains. Rice, okay, avoid that. Um, then we have starches, potatoes. Okay, now rice is also a starch as well. So avoid potatoes, yams, sweet potatoes, rice, anything starchy, avoid it. Why? Because they're going to turn into sugar really fast. And then we have actual sugar. We have cane sugar. We have agave nectar. There, you have honey. You have fructose, high fructose corn syrup. You're gonna to have to avoid all sugars. Now you can do alternative sugars like stevia, monk fruit, xylitol, erythritol. These are sugar alcohols. They have a much lower uh, reaction on the glycemic index than regular sugar. All right, and so you wanna avoid GMO foods, okay? Um, that would be soy oil, corn oil, canola. If you consume organic, you're pretty safe with GMO. Uh, and of course, juice is a sugar. You want to avoid that and you want to avoid soda. There are sodas out there now that are flavored with stevia. Those are acceptable, but juice is loaded with way too much sugar. Okay, so as far as fish goes, very important. Uh, don't consume the farm fed. Do wild caught, much, much healthier. I have many videos on that. You can do a search on that if you want to know why. Uh, pasture raised organic eggs are the best. They're a little bit more expensive, but they are worth it. And then we have organic bacon, okay? That way, uh, you know that the pigs are not fed the GMO grains. We wanna avoid that. Um, and I'll try to get the bacon that's sugar-free and nitrate-free. So if you're consuming uh, 
cheese or cream or half and half or butter from grass-fed cows, it's definitely a lot better. Now, if you're gonna do coffee, really try to get organic because coffee is one of the crops that's the most heavily sprayed of any crops out there. Okay, guys, there you have it. I have a really cool download below if you want to get a summary sheet of all the foods on a healthy ketogenic plan, click down below and download it. And that way you have it on a couple pieces of paper and you can refer back to it. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you're liking this content, please subscribe now and I will actually keep you updated on future videos.